Hey guys, I'm the Spookiest Ghost, and welcome to part 3 of my Epilepsy Awareness series. Today, I'll be debunking common misconceptions about epilepsy and seizures. Before I begin though, I want to promo myself a little, if that's okay. I know, I know, it's annoying, but it'll be quick, I promise. Part 2 of this series was a story time about a terrible experience I had at my old middle school. In that video, and the first part of this series, I mentioned that I would also talk about my first seizure and other epilepsy and seizure related horror stories. I have. Well, I didn't do that. The video was over 20 minutes long and I only told one story, but I will still talk about the things I didn't get to speak about, just in a different video. That is why I am telling you that future story times will be uploaded onto my second channel, It Spooks, which will be linked in the description below. This is because story times aren't really fitting for this channel, but I still want to tell them so if you want to hear those stories, then please subscribe to my second channel. It would be greatly appreciated. I don't know when those stories will be up, but they will be up soon. Also, if you enjoyed the creepypasta readings I did during October, I will continue uploading those on that channel as well. Anyway, I'm done now. Let's just get into the misconceptions. Many people believe that people with epilepsy have seizures triggered by flashing lights and nothing else. But this is not true. I personally have never had a seizure because of flashing lights. Yes, I think flashing lights are a bit annoying and they give me a slight headache, but that's far from a seizure. In reality, seizures have many triggers, and while light can be one of them, it is not even close to the only one. Different people have different triggers. For example, both me and my mom and many other people have seizures triggered by psychological stress. That is precisely why the story I told in part 2 happened, because I was put in a very stressful situation. Side note, this is why anyone with epilepsy should try to avoid stress as much as possible. I can also have a seizure from physical stress, such as being in the heat for a prolonged period of time. Some other triggers for seizures are lack of sleep, alcohol and drug use, musicogenic epilepsy, and not taking your medication. Last one's kind of obvious. So let's go over these triggers. Photosensitive epilepsy is what most people think of when they think of seizures. A seizure triggered by flashing lights. While there are people who do have this kind of epilepsy, it is not nearly as common as you may think. In reality, around 1 out of 100 people are epileptic and only 3% of people have photosensitive epilepsy. That means that out of 100 epileptic people, only 3 of them would be photosensitive. This kind of epilepsy is more common in children and young adults with 5% of kids having photosensitive epilepsy. That being said, people with this form of epilepsy actually can see certain flashing lights. For example, if you have Christmas lights that change color, they may not be dangerous for some people. The common rates are between 3 to 30 flashes per second, also called hertz, but some people have a higher tolerance and go up to 60 hertz. Other than flashing lights, these people may also be sensitive to geometric patterns with contrasts of light and dark, such as stripes. These patterns are not likely to trigger a seizure, however, however, unless they are moving or flashing. There are many other triggers for these kinds of seizures, too many to name here, but I will link my sources in the description if you are interested. Musicogenic epilepsy is a rare form of complex reflex epilepsy where seizures are triggered by music. Statistically, 1 in 10 million people have this form of epilepsy, however studies have shown that it may actually be more common. For some, listening to music is the only trigger, however, some have it far worse. Some people may have seizures from playing, thinking, or even dreaming about music. Some have said that their seizures are triggered by certain genres of music, such as jazz or pop music. Sometimes a part particular instrument can be a trigger. Both this and photosensitive epilepsy are forms of reflex epilepsy, which means that seizures can be triggered habitually by external stimuli. Alcohol and drugs can potentially make your medication less effective, which greatly increases your risk of having a seizure. These two things are also a trigger for seizures because they alter certain functions of the brain. For example, some recreational drugs can cause physical or mental health problems, which in turn puts you at higher risk for seizures. Alcohol can affect your sleep patterns, which can also put you at higher risk. Please note, before I continue, that I'm not trying to preach about not using drugs or alcohol. I'm just stating facts. I will openly admit that I do do smoke pot on a daily basis because it helps me sleep. Smoke 
there are also many people who use marijuana to treat epilepsy. So I don't have anything against smoking weed as long as it's in moderation. As for other drugs, I strongly advise you stay away from them regardless of your health, but especially if you're epileptic. With alcohol, I think that drinking a little if you're epileptic won't really hurt you, but if you do decide to drink, please do research on the interactions of alcohol in your medications and drink with caution. Don't drink alone and try not to get blackout drunk. In the end though, I'm not a doctor and I can't stop you from doing anything. All I can do is tell you what I know from personal experience as well as my own research. This could not be any further from the truth. In fact, there are actually six main kinds of seizures, and they are split into two groups, generalized seizures and focal seizures, which I will refer to as group A and group B. The types of seizures in group A are absent seizures and tonic-clonic seizures. The types of seizures in group B are focal-aware seizures and focal-impaired seizures. So what the hell does any of that mean? Generalized onset seizures affect both sides of the brain at once and happen without warning. The person will be unconscious, except in myoclonic seizures, even if just for a few seconds, and afterwards will not remember what happened during the seizure. The most common seizures are tonic-clonic seizures, also known as grand mal seizures. These also happen to be the seizures my mom and I have. It's pretty easy to remember what tonic and clonic mean. Tonic means tension. During the tonic phase, your entire body becomes rigid because your muscles tense up. Clonic means contracting. The clonic phase is when the person starts uncontrollably jerking. This happens because the person's muscles start contracting. The body stiffens quickly and then relaxes and this repeats for however long the seizure goes on. There are three phases during a tonic-clonic seizure. First the tonic phase, then the clonic phase, and then the post-ictal confusion phase. Other than tonic-clonic seizures, there are also tonic seizures or atonic seizures and clonic seizures. These are less common but should still be acknowledged. A clonic a seizure is just phase 2 of a grand mal seizure. Clonic seizures are pretty rare and mostly happen in infants. There are also two types of clonic seizures. Focal clonic seizures that start in one part of the brain and generalized clonic seizures, which affect both sides of the brain at once. Unlike grand mal seizures, they may or may not be conscious during the seizure depending on which type of clonic seizure it is. Clonic seizures can be part of either group A or group B depending on the type as well. There is also a type Type of seizure called myoclonic, which is similar to a clonic seizure but much less severe. During this kind of seizure, the person is always awake. They are also much shorter, usually only lasting a few seconds, and anyone can experience them, even if you don't have epilepsy, in the form of things such as hiccups or a sudden jerk when you're waking up. So if you've ever had the hiccups, then you've technically had a seizure before. But don't worry, you're fine. You don't need to rush to your doctor or lose sleep out of fear of developing epilepsy. It's totally normal. Tonic seizures are just phase one of a grand mal seizure. During a tonic seizure, a person's muscles will suddenly become very stiff. If they are standing, they may fall, oftentimes backwards, which can lead to head injury. Tonic seizures tend to be brief and come without warning. Atonic seizures are pretty much the exact opposite. In an atonic seizure, also known as a drop attack, the person's muscles suddenly relax and they become floppy. If they are standing, they often fall, usually forwards, and may injure the front of their head or face. Like tonic seizures, atonic seizures tend to be brief and happen without warning. With both tonic and atonic seizures, people usually recover quickly apart from possible injuries. Absent seizures, sometimes called petite mal, are more common in children than adults and can happen frequently. During a typical absent seizure, a person will seem to be daydreaming, but this is actually not the case. The person is actually unconscious, but their eyes are open. These seizures are very short, usually lasting only a few seconds. They may stop what they are doing or continue what they are doing, but either way, they are not aware of what's going on around them. Atypical absent seizures are similar but they are longer. They also may include change in muscle tone which can make them go limp and cause them to fall. If you are a teacher, especially an elementary school teacher or a preschool teacher, it's very important to be aware of this condition because it is not uncommon for children to get in trouble for not paying attention when in reality they actually had a seizure and have no idea. 
What happens during focal aware and focal impaired awareness seizures depends on where in the brain the seizure happens and what that part of the brain normally does. Some focal seizures involve movements called motor symptoms and some involve unusual feelings or sensations called non-motor symptoms. Motor symptoms can include making lip smacking or chewing movements, repeatedly picking up objects or pulling at clothes and screaming, amongst others. Non-motor symptoms can include sudden intense feelings of joy or sadness, experiencing deja vu, getting an unusual taste or smell, and stiffness or twitching, amongst others. There are two types of seizures in this category, focal aware seizures and focal impaired seizures. In focal aware seizures, the person is conscious, will usually know that something is happening, and will remember the seizure afterwards. Some people find their focal aware seizures hard to put into words. During the seizure, they may feel strange, but not be able to describe the feeling afterwards. This may be upsetting or frustrating for them. Focal impaired awareness seizures affect a big part of one hemisphere of the brain than focal aware seizures. The person's consciousness is affected and they may be confused. They might be able to hear you but not fully understand what you say or be able to respond to you. They may not react as they would normally. For example, if you speak loudly to them, they may think you are being aggressive and so they may react aggressively towards you. FIAS often happen in the temporal lobes but can happen in other parts of the brain. After the seizure, the person may be confused for a while, sometimes called post ictal confusion. It may be hard to tell when the seizure has ended and the person might be tired and want to rest. They may not remember the seizure afterwards. There is also a type of seizure in this category called a focal to bilateral tonic clonic seizure. This is when a focal seizure becomes a generalized seizure. In this case, the focal seizure is a warning sign that you will have a more serious episode. If you are epileptic, I highly suggest you read all of the symptoms of focal seizures. This is because if you are aware of any of these symptoms, you can possibly stop yourself from having a seizure. My mom actually has focal seizures prior to a grand mal, and 9 times out of 10, she can sleep it off if she catches it in time. There are many symptoms, so I can't name them all here, but I highly recommend looking into it for your own safety, even if you've never had a focal seizure. Because because better safe than sorry. Finally, there is what is called an unknown onset seizure, which is exactly what it sounds like. It is unknown where the seizure started, either because the person was asleep or alone, so doctors will label it as unknown. No, epilepsy is not contagious. If you know someone with epilepsy, you cannot get it from them. It's physically impossible. There are people on both sides of the spectrum. Some people believe that epilepsy is so bad that no epileptic person is capable of working, while others think that it's not a problem at all. These are both wrong because you have to take into consideration that different people can have different levels of severity. I take medication, and thanks to this I am fully capable of working. I can work, I can go to school, I can go out, I can do virtually anything a non-epileptic person can do. That being said, other people don't have have that luxury. Yes, there are many medications and treatments out there, but there are still people who have very severe epilepsy and cannot find a treatment that works for them. Epilepsy is a disability, and even though I don't consider myself disabled, I still technically am under the ADA. I would not apply for a handicapped parking space or apply for disability because I don't need it. I'm lucky enough to be physically capable of taking care of myself. But that doesn't mean I don't have a disability, because according to the ADA, all people with epilepsy are disabled. At the end of the day, I do still have to take medication every day for the rest of my life. Medications that have some pretty serious side effects that actually do affect me on a daily basis. So is my life easier than others? Absolutely. I'm not gonna sit here and cry about how hard my life is when I'm lucky enough to be at least somewhat healthy. But does that mean I don't face any hardships because of my disorder? No. Uh, hello. Future Spooks here. So as I was editing and I was re-listening to this part, I realized that it kind of sounds like I'm throwing myself a pity party here. And that's, that's really not what I intended it to sound like. So I just wanted to come on here and quickly clear up what I meant. So the reason that I said all of that stuff and the reason that I even included this part was to emphasize that even if somebody has controlled epilepsy, it should still be taken seriously because there's still the chance that somebody might have a seizure even if they have medication. And there are some people that do think that it's not 
really a big deal if you are taking medication for it, but that's a really bad way to look at it because even if you're on medication, it's still possible that someone might have a seizure, so you should still take it seriously. And I guess that's what I meant to say, but I said it kind of in a way that made it sound like I was begging for sympathy or whatever. So I hope that clears some things up. I apologize. Um, yeah. <laughs> anyway, back to the video. Epilepsy is not rare. As I mentioned in my first video, there are 65 million people all around the world who are epileptic, and epilepsy is the fourth most common neurological disorder in America. Taking those numbers into consideration, it's definitely not as rare as you think. I mentioned this in part one, but I feel like I need to reiterate just in case. You don't have to always call 911. This is really important because not only can going to the hospital be a nuisance, it could also do way more harm than good. The last time I went to the hospital after a seizure, I had unnecessary tests done and while luckily I have insurance that covered it, not everyone does. If someone is already getting treatment, the truth of the matter is the hospital can't do anything for them. So by calling an ambulance for someone having a seizure, you could actually just be giving them a thousand dollar hospital bill thanks to a trip to the emergency room that wasn't necessary. My mom got into an accident after having a seizure one time and an ambulance was called for her and her bill was $1,200 for a 15 minute ambulance ride. So yeah. Oh, and she didn't have insurance. It's also important to note that when an ambulance comes to get you after you have a seizure, it's not easy to get them to let you go. The amount of times my mom has argued with EMT because they wanted to take me to the hospital, despite it being completely unnecessary, is too many to count. In fact, out of the many seizures I've had, there has only been one time that I actually needed to go to the hospital, but that's a story for a different time. There are circumstances where you should call emergency services, which I spoke about in part one of this series. Series. But a good rule of thumb is, unless they have a visible injury, refrain from calling an ambulance. Also, another tip I forgot to mention in part one, if you do see someone having a seizure, let the people around you know not to call an ambulance either and try to keep them away from the person. I also mentioned this one in part one, but as with the last one, I feel it's important to reiterate that this is not true. It is physically impossible to swallow your tongue. So please do not put anything into someone's mouth when they are convulsing. You're only making things worse. If you would like to know what you should do when you see someone having a seizure, I'll link my first video in the suggested right up there. Anyway, that's all for today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed and found this video helpful. If you did, please give it a like and share the video to help spread awareness. Also, if you like my content, you can subscribe to my channel and subscribe to my second channel for more videos about epilepsy. If you'd like to stay updated with my channel, you can follow me on Twitter, Instagram, or Tumblr. I also have a Discord so you can join that. And if you'd like to join my super exclusive Discord, then you can donate to my Patreon if you want to, of course. All of the links will be in the description along with the sources I used for this video. I'm the Spookiest Ghost and I'll see you guys next time. Anyway, let's get into the fan art.